Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a short test on this EG4 charge verter and talk about it a little bit. So yeah, this is actually a relatively simple device. So it charges at 100 amps with 240 volts from a generator. The plug can be adapted down to a 120 volt. You're obviously not going to have as much amperage pushing through it. Um, th that, the adaption, the adapter, you would have to do yourself. Uh, so far, Signature Solar hasn't come out with the adapter yet. They say they're working on it. Um, so yeah, I would recommend using it at 240. That way you can get the maximum amperage, amperage but there is, uh, that is an available option there. Then the ring terminals, again, very simple stuff. They're going to hook into your main bus bar. So whatever your system, wherever it branches off from there, um, that main bus bar, mine, if you looked at any of my other videos, there are those 600 amp bus bars. So I would hook the positive and negative into there. So another thing I want to mention is these are 5 16 terminals, ring terminals. So if you have, so my last bus bars were 3 8 I'm a visual person, so it just helps to, I guess I should put it on the positive, right? <laughs> they are not going to fit. So that's not the end of the world. If you've already designed your own system, it's not that big a deal to crimp on a larger lug if you already have everything set up. Uh, if you don't and you are designing something, just know that these are 5 16 and most manufacturers, most retailers are going to say the stud size on the bus bar. I also wanted to mention these little guys get hot, especially if you're charging for hours and hours, which is going to be common if you're charging a large battery bank up. So make sure they're on a fire retardant surface. So some people I've even seen them mount it on their battery rack on the side, which looks pretty cool. Um, but, you know, or I've seen people put spacers behind the feet here just to get it off the wall a little bit. But I just wanted everyone to keep that in mind. So use cases, like why would somebody need this item? So Signature Solar has said that they've had issues, lots of issues with uh, inverters coming back with damage from undersized generators. People are trying to power their loads and charge. Um, and so it's, it's frying the inverter. Uh, you've got generators out there without clean sine waves. And oftentimes, even if it isn't frying it, it won't accept the power. So uh, that fluctuation with the idle and the generator is making it so the inverter uh, just shuts down and will not accept the charge from the generator. MPP has come out with an update, a firmware update for the LV6548 to try to alleviate some of that and give it a little more leeway as the generator might hop up and down. But ultimately, this is really the best solution. Uh, 100 amps is a lot. Um, considering the small size of this and really the price. This little guy packs a punch. I'm about to go test it here. Um, my generator is definitely not, the one I'm going to be testing it with is a very dirty generator. So anywhere from 17 to 25% total harmonic distortion based off what I've seen online, depending on the loads on it. And I got it for the house uh, years ago and I didn't realize how bad of a sine wave it had or back then really even what a sine wave was. Um, so, yeah, all the lights in the house, if you were to use that generator, shimmer like it's Christmas. Uh, it's just a messy generator. But I've kept it for work, uh, and it still works fine. It's just I wouldn't run anything but large hand tools or some jackhammers with it uh, or a well pump maybe. But this will work perfect for the test here, so I'm going to get started here in just a second. I'm going to be wiring this in here temporarily. I am going to come through the bottom of the wireway at one point or another to be able to put the charge burner in permanently when, as soon as I decide where to mount it. And there we go. It's on. So, it's pretty cool. So, let's go up with the current. So, I set the volts at 56 point, I think it went to 56.1. But that's really easy. 
just for anybody they need to know. It comes set at 48 volts, so you can go up to 56, 56.4, whatever you, <laughs> whatever flavor you want. Same thing here, you can go down and change the starting amperage. Uh, and I would advise people to start at 50 and then ramp up if you're going to go higher than that. It's a heavy load to kick into the, the generator to begin with. Yeah, 101, that is really impressive, really cool. I'm going to let this run for a little bit. So it, the fan, it, the intake is over there and um, it blows out here. So in my opinion, it would probably be nice to face it upwards, but uh, it doesn't say in the manual, so I think you could put it sideways too. So I just wouldn't put this side down if I were anyone. Yeah, that thing, that is really neat. So it is warm. Um, the cables are slightly warm, but uh, the warmth really is here. So yeah, guys, in summary, I like it, which was <laughs> sort of predictable, right? I mean, it's a simple device, but it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, it charges at heavy amperage. It's easy to plug in, easy to install. There's nothing really complicated about it. The settings are easy. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a no-brainer if you are off-grid or mostly off-grid like me. Uh, it, it's a device that helps. I, it ran on that generator, which is not the best generator, like I said before. I had a friend that tried to charge his uh, GrowWatt 6K with it, or run, you know, to charge his batteries, and it wouldn't accept the voltage because it was so up and down. So this solves that issue and other issues. So it's pretty easy. I mean, before that point, this is the only 48 volt charger I've had. This is the one um, that Signature Solar sells, the waterproof one, 18 amp, and I bought that with my battery rack batteries and use it to balance each one of them. Uh, and so these have their place, but I saw a guy on the solar forum uh, install like five or six of these in a row, and that would accomplish the same as this little box right here. So yeah, it, it, it's a cool device, especially for the price. I also wanted to mention before I go that this can be hooked up and stay in your system. So um, I've seen some questions about it online and some on videos that uh, people are worried, where if, wondering if they can charge with it while this is on, and the answer is yes. So unless you're, you don't want to exceed the maximum amperage that your batteries can take, obviously. But on a rainy day, when you have a slow trickle from your inverters or charge controllers, this can charge at the exact same time. So yeah, everything can stay integrated and hooked up. And uh, yeah, that about wraps it up. I've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Thanks for watching.